Hi, I'm Todd from Lowbrow Customs. Welcome to my garage. Uh, today we're going to do a simple compression test on this 750 Triumph motorcycle. Uh, anytime you're looking to go buy a motorcycle and if it hasn't been run for a few years, it's a good idea to go ahead and uh, get one of these simple testers available at just about any auto parts store. Simple compression tester. What this will do is tell you the condition of the ring's ability to seal to the cylinder and also if the valves are sealing. Basically it will tell you if you're ready for a top end job or not. Also if the motor has low compression it probably won't even run. So it's a valuable tool when going to look to purchase a motorcycle that it does have good compression if it doesn't run. Simple test you can do to determine the status of the top end of the motorcycle. Okay, any motor needs four things to run. You need timed ignition, which would be your spark, fuel, air, and compression. So, step one, you want to remove both spark plugs from both cylinders if it's a twin. Compression tester that I use, uh, pretty old one from Matco. It does have a quick disconnect, which makes it a lot easier to thread this portion into the engine, and then you can just connect this together when you're doing the test. The one thing you always want to do is maybe put a little dab of grease onto the O ring on the tester before you thread it into the cylinder. That'll help it form a good seal. Okay, got some grease on there. Okay. Uh, one other thing I did forget to mention too, this test technically should be performed, performed on a warm engine, but obviously if you're going to look at something that has been run for a bunch of years, it doesn't run, you can't warm it up to do the test. So basically there will be a slight variance in the results doing it cold versus warm. Okay, we got the tool threaded in, the, into the spark plug hole, and you're just going to Put this simple gauge on here. Okay, both plugs out, tool in the spark plug hole. Uh, important thing you want to do is you want to hold the throttle wide open when doing this test because you want air to be able to get into the motor. If the throttles are closed, it won't let air in. Okay, then basically you've got your throttle wide open. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to kick the motor over. until the needle on the gauge stops moving which it obviously already has okay on the left cylinder I'm seeing about 60 pounds of compression PSI on the left cylinder and that is hardly enough for an engine to run should be over up 100 for this particular motor, it should probably be in the 130, 140 range. Okay, you got a little Schrader valve on here. Release the pressure. And we'll go ahead and put the tool in the other cylinder. Okay, now we've uh, put the adapter into the right hand cylinder. So hold the throttle wide open. Once again, kick the motor over until the gauge stops moving. All right. Now, on that cylinder we have about 65. One, one other important uh, note when doing a pre compression test, if you do find that it does have good compression, uh, you want the readings to be within 10% of each other. So in other words, if this, let's say this side was 130 and this side was 140, that would be a good number. Now if you were seeing this side at 120 and this side at 140, that would tell you that you have either a problem with 
intake or exhaust valve sealing on this side of the engine or the rings on this side of the engine not sealing properly. Okay, somehow we got her to run with no compression. Uh, don't ask me how we did that, but now we're going to go ahead and do it another compression test with the engine warm and record the difference. Got her all hooked up in the left cylinder, throttle wide open. quite a bit there between cold and hot. Now we have about 115, almost 120. Okay, we'll go ahead and do the other side. Cylinder. Okay, so we're right around almost exactly the same as the other side. Alright, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and squirt a little bit of motor oil down in the cylinder and through the spark plug hole. What that will tell us is if the rings aren't sealing good, by adding some oil to the cylinder that will help the rings seal and the compression will go up. If the compression stays the same after we put the oil in, that tells you that you have a valve that's not sealing. So we're just going to a little bit of oil down the hole. Put our tester back in there. And you can see why it's advantageous to have the quick disconnect so you're not spinning the gauge around every time you're putting it in and out of the hole. Don't forget your throttle open. Oh, look at it going up with the oil in the hole. That looks like all she's going to go. Well, it did go up from 15 to 30. So that's a pretty good indication that the rings are worn out and not sealing to the cylinder wall. Okay, we're going to go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. A little bit of oil in the hole. Okay, we got some oil squirt down the right hand cylinder. We're going to spark the hole. Don't forget your throttle again. Once again, the compression did go up by adding the oil to the cylinder. Okay, there you have it. Compression testing 101. Pretty simple test. Nothing complicated about that. A couple of simple hand tools. Gauge available at your local AutoZone or any other auto parts store. Not an expensive tool. Definitely will come in handy if you plan on uh, buying these old motorcycles and bringing them home and fixing them up. You know, if you go to look at a motorcycle, you take this with you when you go to look at it. You ask the prospective seller if they don't mind if you do a little quick compression test. It's not going to hurt anything on the bike. You do find low compression. 
could be a good bargaining chip as to the selling price of the motorcycle. Maybe you can get them down a few bucks uh, because it does not have compression, especially on a bike that's been sitting in a garage or shed for a lot extended period of time not running. Peace out.